Hi, I'm Don, and I've got the privilege of actually taking you on from Sunday in Isaiah 53, one of the most stunning passages of Scripture, a prophetic revelation that is, well, how could you possibly, possibly not realize how amazing Christ is? I want to just share with you something from that. Um, it struck me, it always has struck me when I've read that passage about the prophet like Isaiah. You know, wouldn't he question it? Must have been like this. Peter tells us that he was, well, who is it? What time? What day? When is it going to happen? And he was told, I'm doing a new thing, but it's not your time. I put it so that people can't say, I thought that one up. 700 years later, it's fulfilled word by word by word, sentence by sentence, in the person of Jesus Christ. Well, I want to just go a bit further than that because. Um, as Mark pointed out quite clearly, Jesus, this whole passage is expressing Jesus as the suffering servant, the suffering servant that comes from Christ. The Philippians 2 shows us this, that he came to be a servant of God. Uh, the Hebrews tells us that he, he was God's apostle and high priest, and that's the part I want to pick out this passage. God sent him special mission. What was that? To bring in many sons of glory. And the only way he could do that was to man to die on the cross. So that he became the Lamb of God, sacrificed for our sin. Having done that, this is where the part I want to get us to, so that we can, right at the end of chapter 53, the last line of the, of the chapter says this, He bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. In other words, he became the high priest. The high priest, now there's four things I want to just say on that. The high priest took his own blood in to the Father and presented it, just as the high priest in the tabernacle of the temple would do, and presented it before the, the altar of God. An uh, amazing place between those under those um, great angels that were there. But it was the high priest, Christ, offering his own pure blood, which he knows is eternally accepted by the Father for you, for me. The other important thing is that not only that, but he, he, he entered in, in a, he has a permanent entrance into this place, into the presence of the Father. It's, it's absolutely amazing when you think about it. On the day that Jesus died, the moment he died, um, God ripped open the, 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 the two entrances to the holy place and to the holy of holies, so that there was now a way in. It's a God's way of saying, I accept what my son has done for everybody. And I'm inviting you all to come in on the basis of what he has offered to him, his permanent, once and for all time sacrifice. And he did it on our behalf. I'd love to tell you all sorts of scriptures, but it will take too long for me to do that. Um, but I want to just, um, I'm having to guide myself here because I don't let myself go. But Christ entered into the presence of God on our behalf, Hebrews 9.24. But I also want to just, just say to you, look, his access was permanent, so that we could have a confident, faith-based assurance that no matter what takes place, we're accepted. And the fourth part of that, not only did he bear the sins of many, but the high priest intercedes for the transgressors. What does that mean? Because that's the, the, the whole crux of what he's done. He doesn't have to do that anymore. He doesn't have to come and offer himself anymore. But what he does do, he is speaking, he is there on our behalf 100% of the time. And we know that we, he always lives to make intercession for us. That's what the Hebrew writer says, always. There's never a pause in him relating to the Father, my need, your need. And it doesn't matter what need it is. Just read you something that Paul, um, Paul did, says to us on this. And it's, this is Romans 8 and verse 34. Um, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Is it Christ Jesus who died? Yes, he did. Who was raised from the dead? Who is at the right hand for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? You see what it's telling us? That he is the one that God has set there. And it means that it doesn't matter what you, where you are, as, as John in, in 1 John says, you know, even if you've sinned, we have Christ there. He's our advocate. He's our high priest. 
who says, come here. Now, he may discipline us, but we're never left out. We're never not accepted. We're never turned away. God never says, that's enough, mate. That's enough, Don. You can go and do penance. No, no. He just calls me in. And as I come to him, and I groan again because, Lord, what have I done? But blood is sufficient for you. I cleanse you. And the high priest presents me to the Father again and says, here he is, Father. This is his need. This is his prayer. This is his groan. And it might be that I'm suffering. It might be that I might be persecuted. It might be that I'm ill. I might be presenting someone else to, to him for, for prayer. And we, we need to do that more. We need to come before him and present the wonder of what Jesus Christ, the high priest, wants us to do. I want you to get hold of this one thing that's been a thrill for me in all the years I've been walking as a Christian. And they are many years. That Jesus never lets you go. Jesus never lets you down. Jesus is faithful, as is the Father. And their desire is for you to have a relationship with them and to walk in the light as they are in the light. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have given us the Holy Spirit to be within us all the time. It's as though he's united to our spirit so that we might relate to you, love you, walk with you, and display your glory around this world, your love and your life and your goodness to all the world around us. May you take us as individuals and may you mold us into your church and take us as a church that we see you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.